Mr. Ed here. Today is February 2nd, uh, Groundhog's Day 2017. I uh, just uh, checked out uh, Poxitomi and uh, he said that uh, he saw his shadow. So Phil's saying there's going to be six more weeks of winter. But then the Canadian groundhog says now it's going to be in early spring. So you go figure who it is. But I can tell you right now, here in Louisiana, South Louisiana, it's springtime. It's probably about 65 degrees right now. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. So today, what we're going to be doing today is we're uh, in, in the old building with uh, the kettle right here. And with the kettle, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, melt uh, wax today. That's what we're going to be doing. And I want to show you uh, what we got going on. What we're looking at in these buckets uh, right here is all the, the wax uh, that I've been collecting over the last uh, several months. Um, there's different kinds of different stages. This is uh, actually cappings right here. Um, this is some that the, uh, the bees have kind of just cleaned out or crumbled this stuff up. Here's some that's not even uh, broken up. It's just the comb. Here's some that I've, I've uh, um, started to process and we're just going to keep on processing it. And then this bucket we saw full of cappings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the all this wax in these five buckets, and then I'm going to drop it into my kettle right here. Uh, you can see um, I was did some wax processing not too long ago, and the kettle still got some of the stuff in it. The process of doing the wax it, it takes um, several times, uh, probably four, maybe even five times to really clean it out. But when you do clean it out, let me show you what you get. How about that, folks? That is one big old chunk of wax. And it, it, this one's been processed um, probably three or four times to get it to this uh, point where it is right now. And then you can see I still scraped off some of the stuff on the top. But at this point, this is as far as I'm gonna get it. At this point, I can use it. That's probably about a 15, 18 pound chunk of wax right there. And I don't know um, how much wax we're gonna, you know, wind up with here, but it'll be a nice chunk of it. So the process is um, take all this wax, um, dump it into the kettle, add a bunch of water in there, because I like to use water to help speed things up and let that sediment stuff break down, fall um, through the wax, and uh, settle down onto the bottom of it and uh, start scraping off. So it'll probably be three or four days to do this, but uh, in the end, that's what you get. All right, time to start dumping some wax, put some water in here and light our kettle. Here we go. It's been cooking now for about mm, two, two and a half hours. And uh, let's go ahead and open it up and see what things are looking like. Now, I know that looks really nasty, and it is, but we're gonna straighten that out. Stir it up and see what it looks like. And what you see floating on top of there is uh, the cocoons that are inside of the uh, cone. Now here's a section of it that just didn't melt out, but this piece right here, where if you crush all that, all, those, all the, the cocoons will come out. So the cocoons are it's just silk and, and it'll never break up. So what I'm gonna do 
right now is I'm going to strain out the big parts that most of those cocoons and um, trying to clean up the that that part of the wax uh, initially. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, to do the uh, initial straining to remove these cocoons, um, I got a really complicated piece of equipment. Yeah, it's an old fish frying basket, and it, it's the uh, the mesh in it is big enough to catch the uh, the cocoon. So I'm just going to basically go in here and grab some of these things, bring it around. onto the tray. Here's what all that trash that I took out of the wax that was floating around in there. Um, and you see it on the bottom, it's a, a strainer, so some of the wax will go through there. And this will all get thrown into the next batch. But this stuff right here, it will never go into the batch again. This stuff is going to go out into the dumpster. And, uh, and you can see how much better this is already looking. I'm going to strain this out a little bit more and then we'll put it in the bucket. All right, got a little bit more out of there. The more I can get out of it at this point, the easier it's going to be, um, but maybe even I might have to do it uh, less time as far as uh, uh, straining and filtering this stuff. But look at what's inside of here. It just looks very good inside of here. So this time I'm just going to dump it in the bucket. Uh, now um, I'm not even going to try to filter this stuff. I'm just going to rather scrape it off of the wax after it cools off. So let's uh, open up the gate and let the wax and this honey and all wax and water and whatever's in there, we're just going to come out and into our bucket. Now I'm just going to open up the gate and uh, let all this stuff come out. The wax has been sitting out here now for about, about an hour and a half since I uh, emptied it out. And so the surface has already started to cool off enough where it can harden. And you can already start to see the, the beautiful yellow color in it. There's still lots of, I see bee, bee bodies in there and cocoons still in there. So uh, tomorrow, um, when we get here tomorrow morning, I'll go ahead and empty it out of this uh, container, scrape off all the nasty stuff on the bottom of this and remelt it again and we just keep on refining it. So for today, Groundhog's Day, this is all we got for you. Pick this up again tomorrow. It's been about 12 hours uh, since we uh, poured the uh, hot wax into our bucket. So this morning I'm just going to go ahead and empty the bucket out and scrape off the gook on it. Here's our block of wax with all the nasty stuff on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just scrape all that stuff off right now. And then we're going to throw it in the kettle and heat it up again. about that for a chunk of wax, huh? That is very nice. Still got a lot of stuff in it that I want to clear out. So I think we only have to melt this stuff down one more time. You can see all the, the nasty stuff that comes off of here. 
these hive tools they were great for scraping now if you uh, scrape this stuff off the bottom of your wax you know within a few hours you know, like, like you did 12 hours after that this stuff will come off real easy if you wait and, and really let it solidify oh my gosh it's like you need a chainsaw to get it off so you want to knock this stuff off pretty pretty soon all right we're gonna go ahead and take our block of wax and we're gonna throw it in the kettle again and melt it down this is what our wax looks like I've, I've chopped it up a little bit to uh, kind of like speed up the, the melting process but here it is in the kettle um, cook it down probably about I don't know, an hour hour and a half we'll check it and see what it looks like and, and we'll strain it and that ought to be the end of it so we'll check back in about an hour and a half been about 45 minutes uh, so I'm gonna go and check and see what we got inside the kettle see how it's going oh man it's that's done. Wow, that is nice. Beautiful. So I'm already set up uh, with my strainer. This time I'm going to act this strainer through an old uh, honey strainer right there and that'll catch all the um, all the debris, the big stuff and most of the little stuff and then we'll scrape it out. So let's go ahead and open up the gate and pour in our hot wax and water. And that's what it looks like after it comes out that kettle. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this will be our last time. Once we scrape this stuff off the bottom tomorrow, this one will be done. All right. Until then, that's all I got for you. Been about 10 hours uh, since we did all the um, uh, pouring that hot wax into our bucket. And uh, this is the result of it. It's all cooled down and cool down. You see that nice big old crack in it. That'll help me when I break it up early, uh, uh, later on. So we're going to go ahead and take this thing outside, <clears throat> dump it out like we did before and scrape off the, uh, the garbage that's on the bottom. And there'll probably be less um, trash on it this time than last time. We'll get that thing done and we'll wrap this thing up. Let's go ahead and clean it up. There you have it, a beautiful, beautiful chunk of wax. The bees are already flying around here. This had very little bit uh, garbage on the bottom. Didn't require very much scraping, but this is one nice, look at that little bee right there. They love it, it smells so good right now when it comes out of here. So the bees are on it already. It's probably about 60, I don't know, 63, 65 degrees, something like that out here right now. Bees are flying. Uh, around here. All right. Well, here you have it, the final product. Now, I know that a lot of y'all say, well, Mr. Ed, I, I don't have a big old kettle that can melt, melt all that wax down like, like you got. And before I had the kettle, I was melting my wax down in a two-gallon soup pot, and that's why it would take so many times to, uh, to process it out, to filter it out. But you can do it with a little two-gallon pot like I did it, I just have the access to the big kettle and you can speed up the process really um, a lot, tremendously a lot. So that's about all we have for you today. But before I close, I'm starting something new and, and maybe y'all could help me out with this. Uh, I'm including now in the end of the videos, uh, pictures, videos of, of beekeepers from all over the country and the world um, showing uh, their bee yards and their bees, the aspects of what they do with bees. And if uh, you'd like to participate in that, you can contact me through the comment section and I'll get in touch with you. Um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to uh, start today and we're going to be uh, highlighting a beekeeper in uh, Oklahoma, um, just south of uh, Oklahoma City. His name is uh, Darren Jerome. And uh, he he's works for the FAA uh, in Oklahoma. And he's been keeping bees for a number of years. I forgot how many years he told me. He's got uh, 16 hives and he's on about 10 acres of property and he calls his operation the Jerome uh, farm, uh, Bee Farm. 
So I'm going to include a couple of pictures that he sent me and uh, hope you enjoy that. So that's all I have for you on this project. Stay tuned for the next one, which is actually what we're going to do with this wax. And uh, until then, thank you for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, I'm out of here. Until next time. Look at these girls.